I even cut that last video a little short. Okay, the purpose of all that was trying to show how we're calculating a directional vector in relation to, in this case, the MPC, how we're rotating on the Y. So we only want a directional vector that's random on the X and Z. We don't want any on the Y. Now, I already covered that, but the purpose was to also go to my prototype 3D scene. Go to the NPC. Now he is going to be walking up and down and around all kinds of things. So we'll set him to not chasing. So he'll be free roaming. If I hit play, that's what I wanted to illustrate in the last video. You see, even on a three dimensional surface, he's remaining as upright because he's only calculating a rotation on his Y. See, like that. Okay, so he's only turning on his Y. He's not adding any other rotations on his other two axes. So as he goes around on the 3D world, changes his direction, points, looks, walk around, and there we have it. That's what I, that was the second half of the last video right there. Okay, so as I said, um, I really don't have an audience for this video series, so I'm literally going to try and punch out this whole series tonight. I'm just going to finish off tonight, get everything done, make this into a slender game as I promised, and also show another example of how this doesn't have to be slender and the scripts are still useful. Because that was the whole point of the video series, was to show how to write a script, and if you write a good script, you know, it doesn't break, it's pretty optimal, pretty smart. Then why write it again? Why start a new project and then write a whole brand new script? If you've already created a script that is useful and has some functionality that can be spread across multiple projects. Okay, so I'm about to start butchering this one. So I'll show you a little technique that I do for my own backing up. Because remember, I always said you, you've got to save all the time. You've also got to back up your projects. Things like when you create a terrain. If you create a terrain and you like it, let's go back. You know, before something silly happens or in case you upgrade Unity or anything like that, even by saving, export your assets. Okay? Export package. See? I've just grabbed my train, I've set it to export, it's grabbed all the textures, all the trees, and of course the train data. Okay, the data's all hidden in there somewhere. Part of the asset. Anyway, so when when you export, that'll come with the splat alpha information, which is all the details. Okay, so make sure you save and back up all the time, constantly, especially on a nice, you know, half decent train. I mean, I could modify the trees and also modify the grass, paint some different things on there. That'd be a great place to start on my next project. So if you ever create anything you like it, export. Okay, now with this script, I'm about to butcher. I have a script, it's half decent, you've seen it working. We have an NPC that we can set to chase us or to run away from us. And then he's got like a bit of free roaming as well. If he's out of range. What I like to do, I'll actually save as. But instead of saving it as a script, I'll save it as a basic text document. Okay, that way it doesn't interfere with Unity at all. It's not part of the compilation and if it's not an asset in the project, it doesn't get built out with it but I always have it here. It's backed up. I can always use it as a reference. If I start again, I can just grab this state machine, whack it into a new script. So how do I do this? So yeah, this is basic. Okay, so this is my basic script that we've finished up to here with all the functionality you've seen. So I saved it there. Now remember, you can't modify this. This is not your JavaScript anymore. This is just a text document. So there isn't even any compilation in Unity doesn't mean a thing to it. It doesn't use this text document at all. So now I can happily modify this and I know I've got a backup. If I do something silly or delete something or the computer breaks or the power goes out, I've got a backup. Okay. So let's start butchering this one. Let's just make it full on slender. Eh? So what am I going to do? Let's start by giving it a boolean variable 
see if we are going to use this for Slender. So back into our actual JavaScript, I've reopened that. Don't edit the text document, that's a backup. So we're going to var, is this Slender? <sighs> Boolean equals true. Let's just make it happen. Alright, so what did Slender, my old Slender script, my old guides do that this one currently doesn't? Well, it actually had a teleporting function. And that's something that we could throw in quite quickly. So I'm literally going to borrow from that. There we have it. And it'll be almost like copying and pasting, but um, I will explain it. So what happens here? We've got invoke repeating teleport enemy. So I obviously have a teleport enemy function here somewhere because it's being invoke repeated. Okay, so there's our teleport enemy. Actually, it does have a lot of checks, doesn't it? We could even clean that up. Alright, let's work on the teleporting. So, of course, we're going to check if. Because, unless you want teleporting in that, I don't think you want this to be used anywhere else. It is my slender. So, if is slender, we're going to call a function. Let's create that function first. Teleport enemy. So if we're slender, we want to be able to have a teleportation functionality. So I mentioned how we use that. Invoke. Now it'd be good for anybody just to type invoke into the API and have a look at these different methods, see what's available. So we have invoke. Close up some of these all telephones. Okay, we have invoke, we have invoke repeating, and we have cancel invoke. We also have this is invoking, that's a good way to check if something is going on behind the scenes or not, so that you can control that. So, invoke. Invokes the method or the function by its name in a certain time. So if I said invoke teleport enemy after two seconds. So that would do it once. Okay, and here's our example. It launches a projectile in two seconds, but it only happens once. This is good for the start function or something that you want to time out and destroy at the end, again, like a bullet or some kind of projectile. What's next? You have invoke repeating. Pretty much the same as the first one. Invokes the method in a time. After the first time, it keeps calling that function every repeat rate. So again we have invoke repeating, teleport enemy, we'll start teleporting enemy, say 30 seconds, and then repeat rate, let's just check every 30 seconds after that. Invoke repeating and we're going to be calling this function here with the function name as a string. Alright? Let's just check that. Method name as a string. And if we look at the example, yes. Method name as a string, even though it's a function. So we can't really pass any information to something like that. Invoke repeating teleport enemy. I said the first one. I might even set it to one full minute before the first invocation. And then call it every 30 seconds after that. So you can cross reference what did I do in the old one. Uh, every 10 seconds. Well, that happened a lot faster, didn't it? Alright, well, let's just do that. Make it 20. Okay, so, if this script for the NPC is a slender script, we're going to start our invoke repeating of our teleport. We're going to check in our teleport. Now, we have set up a state machine here that does checks for us. You know what, I can see where this is not going to happen until I do 
the is visible part first. It's so, alright, I'm just going to even leave that video cap it off here. I'm not going to re record or anything like that. We've just done some setup, which is still relevant to making this a slender script. So, let me just quickly recap and then work on what I'm going to show you next.